Well, hello there. Hello and welcome. Welcome and hello, hello and welcome. My name is Danny Deals. On behalf of Hurricane Lopez and Stock Karen, we would like to say hello and welcome. Thank you for tuning in to another exciting edition of Un Poco Moss, the show where we give you just a little bit more. Today, I would like to talk with you about none other than the SoFi stock, ticker symbol S-O-F-I. Guys, the SoFi stock was down uh, 28 cents uh, during uh, trading and another 10 cents after hours. Lost uh, about 4.5% on the day, including that aftermarket price action. Guys, the volume was, again, moderate at 37 million shares. Not as low as it has been um, some of the previous days, but certainly not as high Um you know, the stock was trading near 100 million shares. And basically, as the market makers have determined to kill the stock, um, basically kill options, um, guys, you, you don't need to be a genius. Um, just take a look at the options. Where, do, where does the um, call volume come in for this Friday? Of course, it comes in at 8 bucks. Um, 19,000 uh, call options there, 14,000 at 850, 11,000 at nine bucks. Um, and you can see today um, those options are down 57%, 75%, and 75%. Um, of course, all that at uh, 850 and nine has basically um, become worthless. And guys, you see this day after day after day, the stock um, will run up a bit uh, early in the week. Um, get pushed back down to kill options on Friday. It just happens over and over and over and uh, has happened for, you know, well over a year now. But um, people are telling me that those are hedges and those are market makers buying most of those options. I absolutely do not believe that. Um, they might buy some earlier in the week when they're not exactly sure what's going to happen. But midweek, they, they dump that trash on retail. Um, retail gets all excited. The stock might go up that week and they buy buy these uh, short-term calls, and then market makers kill the calls, um, keep the premium, keep the profit they made earlier in the week, and basically um, dump the hot garbage on the uh, baggies, as you guys like to say. Um, what went on today, guys? What what was the deal? Um, th the data is so confusing, guys, because it's telling me that the short interest has gone from 11 to 16 and the days to cover have gone from five to two and a half. Um, and then the shares on loan have come all the way down from 240 million down to, you know, 138 million or something like that. And the data just doesn't make any sense unless, um, you know, it's all short, long stuff. They're shorting the stock with options. Guys, look at this data and, you know, you tell me what you think's going on. I mean, the free float on loan has gone to 16, uh, the estimated short interest of the free float has gone all the way up to 16%. Um, the free float on loan is now at 16%. That number used to be uh, much, much higher. This um, shares on loan at 130, this used to be well over uh, 200 million. And then utilization, it's saying, has gone up. So, and, and if you look at the cost to borrow on the max, um, it was 8% today, guys. And the average was 4%. That number is usually 0.8%, 0.9%. If it's high, it's like 1.2, 1.4%. Um, these days when the cost to borrow max spikes like 14% or in this case 8%, Market makers are working extremely hard to kill the stock, guys. Look at the daily chart. Basically, what you see, um, the stock opens, um, you know, basically about 823, 825, comes all the way up to 826 right there. And then, you know, by 24 minutes of trading, guys, the stock is all the way down to um, the low of the day at like $7.86. Um, it tests that level, um, $7.88, $7.87, uh, once, twice, uh, three times, and then, you know, pops back up to that $8 level. And I think the algo is trying to hold the stock basically, obviously just over eight bucks. Um, so that all the call options at $8, um, all the tens of thousands of call options that are now owned by um, wily retail investors with a penchant for risk and stupidity, um, they're just taking it in the shorts and um, there, there's absolutely nothing they can do now because nobody's going to buy that option. It's, it's, it's essentially worthless and 
you know, with the time decay factor of tomorrow, um, it's, it's moving very, very quickly. Thus the 75% decline in the value of those options, uh, during the day here today. But, you know, you morons keep buying those, um, short-term calls and, um, you're going to get, what's the definition of insan insanity folks. Now, now look at the daily. I mean, another way to look at this guys is the stock went down, um, completely artificially to 786 and then it closed at 810. So in that respect, when there were actually human beings um, trading the stock, the stock really went up 24 cents um, during trading and would have maintained like a 14 cent gain from that, you know, low, that sell off. I know that's, you know, that's just a convoluted way of looking at things, but you just have to look at this chart, guys, and see this is not a uh, natural trading pattern. This is 100% uh, algo-controlled trading. Um, what do I think is going to happen um, in the immediate future? Obviously, I am uh, a complete idiot, and I am merely guessing, guys, but I thought we were in a wedge here. I thought we had some support going back uh, over a month um, on this bottom side, despite these outliers. Uh, we have to ask ourselves, guys, is this another situation that happened on 623? Um, where we're going to uh, recover the next day. I mean, not even recovered the same day, but then uh, 626, it went on this absolute pump and dump um, terror. So it's very hard to predict exactly what's going to happen, but I really believe uh, $8 has flipped to support. A lot of people completely disagree with me. Um, the, you know, basically FUD spreading turds that are doing battle um, with the forces of good, the turd army, um, they are out in force, guys. They are absolutely out in force. Um, I'd like to um, basically show you uh, a couple of things Um couple of news articles. First off, options, um, the most active equity options for midday Thursday. Um, SoFi is on this list. Look at the other companies, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, uh, Mullen, Bank of America, Google, I mean, PayPal. These, these are big um, mega cap uh, companies. And there's our humble little SoFi in there with, um, you know, it's either mega caps or meme stocks. And uh, SoFi is uh, neither. Um, I know it sort of character, you know, referred to as a meme stock, SPAC, trash, all that stuff. But guys, um, the numbers, the earnings report, the management, um, the business model, all, all indications, if you actually look at objective facts and data, are that this is a really good company uh, growing at a pretty rapid clip, uh, making, um, you know, taking advantage of their bank charter gives them a unique advantage as a lender, um, paying higher interest rates, growing members, growing direct deposit at an incredible clip, uh, one of the fastest growing banks in the country. No value given to their technology side, Galileo. People think it's a drag on the company. I think long term it's going to be uh, quite the opposite. But just interesting that um, SoFi is on this list of the most uh, active uh, options for Thursday afternoon. Um, let, let's take a look, guys. David Modell, um, Investor Place. Investor Place shits on SoFi constantly. Um, three reasons why student loan decision didn't lift SoFi stock and why that's okay. This, this guy's actually not too bad. I've read a lot of his articles. He, he basically rehashes what other people say, but it's just, it's just the narrative like invest investor place claims to be neutral SoFi, but they're actually very, very bearish. One of the biggest uh, FUD spreaders on SoFi, I believe. Um, but anyway, the Supreme court decision came down a signal event for borrowers and for SoFi. They're talking about, you know, what will happen, how many people are going to refi the fact that first quarter 2023 saw student loan origination volume uh, plummeted 47%. It says shockingly it plummeted. Like that's not shocking. When you look at the interest rates, Who, who's going to refi to a higher interest rate during a student loan moratorium? Like they don't even have to make payments. Um, it's not shocking at all, but that's just what these guys want to come up. They're like, okay, the student loan, this is the, he, he references compass point research analyst, Giuliano Blogna, who, um, previously was with another firm that, uh, just gave the SoFi stock a $14 price target BTIG. He worked there for eight years and his, um, his replacement over there issued a buy at $14 fresh initiation, just completely out of the blue. That was on the pump. And then this guy had moved over to a new company um, from BTIG. He moved to Compass Point and he issued a 
$5 sell rating and felt that the stock's stunning, stunning performance was overdone. This um, turd agrees with the baloney sandwich. His no baloney explanation. The student loan moratorium was already scheduled to end June 30 with payments resuming 60 days later. Recent events are unlikely to have a material impact on that timeline and the recovery refinance origination volumes. And then they go into JP Morgan analyst Reginald Smith, who, you know, is, is a real two-faced sack of dump. Um, he, he really kissed uh, Noto's ass completely at the JP Morgan um, FinTech conference, said how great SoFi was, how much he liked the app, that he's a customer, blah, blah, blah. But of course, um, once the um, Mr. Noto is gone and he is making his ratings, he is going to do, in my opinion, whatever he is told to do by the dark forces that run the market. And let's be honest, guys, um, JP Morgan has been quite uh, bearish on SoFi for a long, long time. Um, they have a $6 price target on the stock. Um, Smith suggested that just a fraction of borrowers would actually refinance with a private lender like SoFi. And that's that's very true. Um, LaPointe identified the market, but it's still um, quite, quite a large market when you actually take a look at the people that may refinance. And then when you go into the credit box, that cuts it down to about a third of that pool because SoFi is so selective with who they will loan to just in general. You have to have great job great credit, et cetera, et cetera. Surely the market understood Smith's finding that very few people, okay, yeah, I mean, it obviously, the market crapped all over the stock. Um, at least that's what they'd have you believe. I believe it, you know, the short interest went up from 11 to 16. And the algo has been doing everything humanly possible to advance the narrative that um, the rally is over, that the rally was overdone. I mean, let's be honest, guys, from highs over 10 bucks, like the stock has already shed, um, you know, a quarter of its value. And then people like um, JP Morgan, they're expecting it to go ahead and shed, uh, you know, another, or it shed almost a quarter, over a fifth of its value, and then from over 10. And now they're expecting from uh, eight to six, they're talking about shedding another 25% of its value. So a rally being overdone at 1024 doesn't necessarily mean the stock is, is worth six. That's back down almost to those levels in the fives where the stock had been um, absolutely trashed uh, for, um, you know, the last 18 months or so. Um, guys, and they're basically saying, just relax and be patient, let events play out as they will. SoFi Technologies is a disruptive neobank with a great deal of potential. However, timing is crucial for financial traders. Therefore, I still believe it's wise to wait for SoFi stock to pull back to $6. Um, if then you're ready and the narrative hasn't changed drastically, you can scale into a share position. Guys, this is critical. People who tell you don't buy now, the price is too high, the stock is going to pull back another 25%, they have no idea what's going to happen. They're just completely talking out of their ass. And it's just a tricky way of saying don't buy the stock. If they're saying, they're saying I love the stock, it's a disruptive neobank, I love it long term, I just don't like it at these levels, it's a little overbought, just buy it six. Guys, this guy has no idea if and when the SoFi stock is going to pull back to $6. Um, they could have a huge beat in earnings. It's in three weeks. Um, the stock could go up, up, and away, and run away. And, you know, I realize it's not going to run up forever. There's always going to be pullbacks. That's that's completely healthy um, while the stock's moving up. That's healthy price action uh, for bulls, for long-term bulls. But... It's wise to wait for $6. Um, how do you know this stock is going to pull back to $6? I would argue that's highly unlikely. Um, day after day, $8 is being confirmed more and more as support. And though the stock has been pushed down under $8, it doesn't seem to want to stay there. So we have to see, guys, killing options tomorrow. What is the stock going to do? I think um, tomorrow is going to be a green day on the markets. Um Strong jobs, all this stuff. Just the fact that they're going to raise rates two more times this year to try to combat inflation um, is no reason that uh, the SoFi stock should sell off. It's no reason the SoFi stock shouldn't go up. Um, guys, read the financials. Look at the net interest income um, SoFi is making on their personal loans, guys. It's a great business. They have, and, and also, despite the media narrative, they have plenty of um, headroom to uh, make more loans. They can make a lot more loans. Listen to Noto. Listen to LaPointe. They have a huge credit facility. It's not tapped out. They have plenty of cash. Their deposits are growing very rapidly every single quarter, which allows them to make uh, more and more loans. Guys, let's shift gears over to the fly uh, tip ranks. 
I just, this is from June 30th, but I just want to just basically take the time to say what a absolutely, um, dishonest, um, piece of crap that Chia Pet is over at Wedbush. I, I looked at Wedbush's call on UBX the other day. I'm like, what happened to Wedbush? Like, guys, I, I don't get it. L listen to the completely illogical nature of the, um, you know, word salad, Wedbush analyst, David Chiaverini um, says, and then listen to this article kind of advance the narrative. Okay, they struck down the Supreme Court. Wedbush analyst David Chiaverini said this incremental news is already priced in to SoFi's valuation. Guys, listen to this idiot. He says that the incremental news is already priced in to SoFi's valuation. Okay, and this is when the stock was like 850 or something. So his price target is $3 on the stock. So if the semi good news is priced into the current valuation, how the hell does that fit into your narrative, your logic? You should have to explain why the stock is worth $3. Why at the time you made this call, the stock is worth one third. The company is worth one third of the market cap. So if you had an eight, you know, an eight billion uh, market cap, he's saying it should be, you know, two point seven or two point six. Um, how the hell can you say this decision is priced in the valuation, and then you say the valuation is three times what it should be? It's just it, it makes no logical sense whatsoever. He doesn't explain his call at all. It's just this vague, fud spreading, absolute horseshit you see over and over and over from David Chiaverini at Wedbush. And look how it skews the data. High 14, average 835, low three. So you get this narrative that analysts are split between 14 and three evenly when that's absolutely not the case, guys. This is a complete outlier, a completely, in my opinion, dishonest, intentionally dishonest call. Look at Kevin Baker from Piper Sandler. He's basically a little bit of a bear on the stock. He was one of these guys that came in and uh, basically downgraded from a buy to a hold. Um, his price target, I think, actually went up from like 650 to 8. But, you know, he basically reiterated the hold position at $8. The stock is currently at $8. So he's basically saying the stock is priced at the correct level uh, currently. Now the Chia Pet has it at three, okay? He's reiterated that call five times since earnings. Um, you don't see Kevin Barker of Par Piper Sandler reiterating his hold five times. Um, and look at the difference, guys. The Chia Pet, David Chiaverini from Wedbush, is one of the worst analysts in the country, a zero star analyst, a total flatliner, a sack of dump. Guys, this guy is garbage. Look at Kevin Barr. I'm not in love with an $8 price target, but look, he's 181 out of 8,500 analysts. He's, he's in the top 500 out of 34,000 experts. Okay, if you copied his trades for and held for one year, 62% of your transaction would generate a profit with an average return of 14%. Guys, look at the numbers for this moron, the Chia Pet. I mean, just look at the numbers. He's ranked 8,200 out of 8,500 in Wall Street analysts. He's ranked 31,400 out of 34,000 experts. His success rate is 36%. His average return is negative. Copying David Chiaverini's trades and holding each position one year, you would make a profit 36% of the time and your average return would be negative. 8%. So even a bear like Piper Sand, even a bear like Piper Sandler, Kevin Barker, um, I'm not in love with his $8 target, but at least it's realistic guys. I mean, the Chia pet is talking about giving us a valuation of like next year's sales with 25% growth at the top line. And we're going to make a profit next year. It's absolutely absurd. You do not value a growth stock, a bank with a, with a technology arm. That's not even priced in you. You value that company at next year's sales with this type of growth. It is absolutely absurd. It's an injustice. Again, in my opinion, the FBI, the sec should be investigating Wedbush. Um, I have no proof of criminality of wrongdoing, 
But guys, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it looks like a dishonest, weasley, pasty, scumbag piece of crap, it might just be the Chia pet at Wedbush, David Chia Verini. Look at his reiterations, guys. I know I go on and on and on about this guy, but he it's just he's killed so many rallies. He killed he's done everything humanly possible to fillet the short sellers and bears and kill the SoFi stock. Look at this, guys. This is earnings come out. He places a hold on the stock, downgrades to $5 price target and a hold. Two weeks later, downgrades again to sell and $250. Two weeks later, reiterates sell. I think he moved to three bucks. Not even two weeks later, reiterates a sell, still at three bucks. Um, two weeks later, reiterates a sell at three bucks. Guys, this sack of shit is a professional hitman. He's garbage. He's not trying to be right. You could invest better, more successfully throwing darts at a board or pulling stocks out of your backside than you would list. How does this guy have a job? I'll tell you how he has a job because this is his job. Killing rallies, killing stocks, timing calls and media coverage. In my opinion, that's what he's doing. Um, I'm entitled to my opinion. I think this guy is an absolutely smirking, dishonest hack who should be investigated. That's my opinion. Guys, um, moving on, what do I think is going to happen tomorrow? Not a goddamn thing, guys. Um, they're going to kill these options. They're going to crap all over the SoFi stock, and that's just the way it is. Um, retail, every time you get excited, every time you get, you know, a semi, don't buy these options on a Tuesday from market makers after they've spiked 50%, and then you get a little Woodrow Wilson. Um, boing! And you decide, I'm going to buy some short-term calls. Oh, it's going to go up by Friday. Earnings this way. No. Don't invest in options. You're a moron. You're weak. And then you try to dump them for like two cents. Maybe they'll drive the price up a little bit tomorrow. But you're, you panic sold already. You probably have a stop loss on your options. You're probably a complete idiot. Stop buying short-term weekly call options. They always die. It helps market makers. Stop putting stupid stop losses on your stock. They're going to attack those two. Stop loss raids. Um, everything is in play. Uh, the whole deal, guys. The short interest, guys, is really through the roof on the stock. Um, still over 16% uh, of the free float. And guys, institutions are buying. BlackRock's been buying. Vanguard's been buying. Of course, Nodo has been buying heavily, as has LaPointe. Yes, they're diluting with some stock-based compensation, but there's a lot of shares being taken off the market. And don't discount retail investors such as myself, perhaps uh, such as yourself, who hold a hell of a lot of shares and are not selling them. And my shares at SoFi, people who say, you can't lock your shares um, because if you're trading on margin, they won't lock your shares from uh, borrow. And if you guys, I'm not trading on margin. I'm not borrowing money. I own tens of thousands of shares in my SoFi account and they are locked. I can confirm that. All you have to do is go in the customer service chat and say, I do not want to participate in your share borrow program. Within a day or two, they lock their shares, your shares, and they send you a confirmation. That's why utilization is 50%. Um, that's why the cost to borrow in real terms hit as high as over 8% today. Um, when they're telling you that the borrowed change is minus 5 million shares, guys. How is that possible? Think, think about this. Think about the logic of what you're being told. Put the pieces together. Follow the breadcrumbs, guys. Follow the money. They're telling you they returned 5 million borrowed shares and only borrowed 400,000. So they're saying the net borrowed change was 5 million shares. Guys, they only traded 37 million shares. So one seventh of all the churn were returned and the stock still went down 28 cents. It is an absolute bunch of crap absolute bunch of crap guys there was buying pressure all day from 9 54 a.m on there was buying pressure guys this stock is on a hit list why is it on this options list why do they care so much about this little tiny insignificant bank and lender that's doing two billion dollars a year currently why because of the growth, guys. Because they're adding members, they're taking customers away. I saw an article about this the other day that SoFi is winning the fight. That 
of all the new accounts, of all the new deposits, something like that, almost 50% were placed with fintechs, with online people, not brick and mortar banks, not the mega banks. And we think about how small these fintechs are. That's extraordinary. They're cleaning the clocks of the Wells Fargo's, the cities, the Chase's, the Bank of America's, the unions. They're absolutely cleaning their clock and it's terrifying. And they're terrified. And that's why you have this huge short on a company that is performing very, very well and firing on all cylinders. Guys, I expect this short to let go significantly um, by earnings. What are what are we going to see? What are, what are we going to see happen tomorrow? What are we going to see happen leading up to earnings? Guys, it is my opinion that the stock does have support at eight and that the stock is going to regain this here trend line and move up higher. Um, I said the stock was going to consolidate between 813 and 891. I still believe for the most part that was accurate, but obviously um, today they just decided to beat the living hell out of the stock. I don't believe for one minute there were 5 million uh, net shares returned. They have to be shorting the stock very, very heavily with options or in some way that Ortex can't measure. It will probably pop up there tomorrow. Ortex is the best of the best. Um, I pay full boat. I have absolutely no relationship with them other than as a full price paying customer. And I highly, highly recommend Ortex. Absolutely best data you can get anywhere. And though it's not cheap, it is worth every penny and more. I would pay double, triple, um, you just get a you just get a blueprint of what's going on, and they make it very very simple. You can sort data a million different ways, um, and I highly recommend the site, guys, if you're serious about investing. Um, guys, the SoFi stock, um, I expect it probably early next week to come back up to this uh, mid eight level, at least this eight thirty four level. That's been uh, very very sticky for the stock. You see it test that level once, twice, thrice here. Um, comes back here, also tests it here. And then, you know, I don't know exactly what this level is, but it's something around that same level. So I think we're going to regain that 834 level, probably bounce around there for a little bit next week between um, there in the 860s, possibly up to eight, uh, 890. And then um, depending on what those short-term calls look like, I expect the uh, stock to be attacked again, guys. But the problem is, um, the vice is getting tighter. The window is getting tighter. Earnings is less than three weeks away. And I think in the back of their mind, guys, they know that Noto has something dialed up. Um, we've seen a five cent loss each of the last two earnings reports. Noto and LaPointe know that is absolutely not going to cut it a third time. If they have a five cent loss, that's going to be a one cent beat on guidance. That's weak. It's weak. It's weak, Noto. It's weak, LaPointe. We're not putting up with it, guys. We need to cut back the stock-based compensation, dial the numbers in, finesse the numbers, find the votes, um, whatever you want to call it, and get to net profitability so some institutions come into the stock and the shorts finally let my people go. Let my people go. You useless, short, long, dishonest, hack turds. I can't stand you guys. You deserve the Chia Pet. Um, you two are made for each other. You're both absolutely dishonest hacks willing to do and say anything to make a dishonest nickel. In my opinion, look at the timing. Look how many reiterations of his sell rating this sack of crap has issued over just since the last earnings report. It's unheard of, guys. Nobody rates a stock um, five and six times. Uh, nobody reiterates their rating every uh, two weeks for absolutely no reason. Nobody does it. But um, then that's amplified by, of course, Investor Place, who's always shitting on the SoFi stock. Guys, I hear this online all the time. I love SoFi. They're disruptive. They're growing. They're doing all these things right. But I just don't like it now. Just buy later when it's five. Um, guys, that's a fancy way of saying don't buy. Buy later when it's five. They have no idea if and when it's ever going to be five. So if you like the stock and you like the valuation, the time to buy the stock is right now. And that's what these FUD spreading turd trolls like the Chia Pet, like the bologna sandwich, like the people that write these articles. I mean, who is this guy, guys? Just, just, give, just let me give you an example of the type of journalism you're getting. David Modell, who again, his, his articles aren't bad. He's, he's basically a nothing. He doesn't... Um, you know, it doesn't, 
he doesn't have any information or analysis. He just rehashes what someone else said in quotes and writes sort of this brain dead drivel. Look at his education. His expertise is stocks, options, precious metals, bitcoins, and altcoins. Like, okay, that pretty much covers everything. That's your expertise. Um, you cover uh, coin, precious metals, options, and stocks. That You don't cover bonds? I mean, come on. And your education, you have a master's degree in education from the American College of Education. Is that an online school? Is that on a Cracker Jack box? What the f is that? What the f is that? Come on. What is this? Um, bachelor's degree in education from Florida Atlantic University. Um, they often call that the Harvard of the Panhandle. And an associate's degree in liberal arts from the Palm Beach Community College. Who lists their associates? Who lists an associates? Who is this guy? He's an active social media influencer with tens of thousands of followers on YouTube and Twitter. Oh my, um, perhaps I could uh, poke him on Friendster and pick up a few subs. You turds, do not like and subscribe to this channel. Do not like and subscribe. You guys are buying those short-term calls. I can't trust you guys. Don't like and subscribe. Just, you know what? Don't like and subscribe now because the channel sucks. Like and subscribe later when the price is better. I mean, you know, it's free already, but maybe someday I'll give you $5 to subscribe. Maybe not. Maybe not, guys. Think again. Think again. Shh, 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 shh. Okay, guys, so this is just what I'm talking about. These are tools. Like, what does this guy care about his reputation? His, his wealth building strategies? This guy has some, you know, education. He, he has degrees in education. He doesn't have any training in, in financial matters. He doesn't have any training to analyze stocks. He just He's just a rehash hack advancing a narrative advanced by the bologna sandwich, the chia pet, their bosses, the shorts, the bears, the turds, the big banks that want to kill SoFi and every other FUD spreading sack of shit that has it out for this stock and is battling the turd army down in the trenches every single day. Guys, we're still very, very solid. Remember, we were just at $4.50. Um, this pullback and consolidation is actually healthy. The fact that they had to increase the shorts, uh, the short percentage that much to kill this rally and downgrade and reiterate and all this other crap, um, it basically tells a story, guys. These big banks are absolutely terrified. Um, they'll do whatever they have to do to try to kill this stock. But guys, if the earnings report is excellent, we need, um, at worst, a two cent loss, guys. We need we need a good solid four to five cent beat. And um, I'm counting on Noto to turn that in. He and Lapointe should know, guys. Five cents is um, is not going to do it. Not for the third time in a row. It totally. Um, craps all over the growth story. It totally kills the bullish narrative and we just can't have it, guys. We absolutely can't have it. I can't have it and I won't have it and I won't tolerate it. Noto, the point. Call me, call me. Um, guys, I've gone on absolutely forever as I want to do. And, um, you know, the amazing part is I can go on for half an hour and say absolutely nothing useful or even um, slightly entertaining guys. Um, I'm sure none of you are watching. Uh, I appreciate you hanging in there. If anyone still is, um, guys, it's the SoFi stock. It's ticker symbol S O F I SoFi, SoFi, so far, so good. Holding that support at the $8 level. I'd like to see us regain, um, 813 at least tomorrow. And I think we will stop buying short-term calls. You're way too weak and stupid to handle options. You should, it's like a kid running with a pair of scissors or playing with fire or lighting his own hair on fire. You just can't be trusted. You guys are weak turds and you're stupid. And you know, a wolf has to protect the sheep. And unfortunately, some of you retail folks are the sheep. Um, stop selling your stock, panic selling, stop with the stupid stop losses, stop buying short-term options. Basically everything you do, stop. Pick good undervalued companies, time your entry points for when the stock pulls back a lot, and then just hold, just stop buying stock all the time. You don't need to buy every week. You don't need to buy and sell every day. You know, buy twice a month, buy a good company. It'll keep you from losing money. You don't want to be buying and selling stocks like a crackhead all the time, guys. Buy quality and hold. Accumulate when the stock pulls back. Do not play their game. Do not panic sell. Do not set stop losses. Do not buy on spikes. 
Don't buy shooting stars, guys. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick to the rivers and the streams that you're used to, guys. Come on. Look to TLC for investing advice. TLC knows more about investing than the Chia Pet, the bologna sandwich. At least they're not lying to you. You know, they're telling it like it is, guys. Look at that. You know, we're the Millers when that redheaded kid raps that verse. Very, very funny, guys. I'm getting a little bit far afield. Going to go ahead and cut this thing short. Um, Don't want to go just a second over uh, 35 minutes. We just want to keep it brief um, for you guys. I, as I said many times, brevity is the soul of wit. And here at this channel, you get neither. Guys, it's un poco mas. My name's Danny Deals. Thanks a lot for watching. It's the SoFi Stock, ticker symbol SOFI. It is July the 6th, 2023. Topper time check is 5.49 p.m. It's 11 minutes to the top of the hour, 19 minutes past the bottom of the hour. It is 49 minutes past the previous hour. And again, 11 minutes till the top of the hour. Um, just six hours and 11 minutes to midnight tonight. That's your Toper time check. Toper time check is 5.49 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Guys, it's the SoFi Stock. It's Un Poco Moss. My name's Danny Deals for Hurricane Lopez and Stock Karen. We would like to say thanks for watching. We really appreciate every single one of you. And I hope you guys have a great night. I will talk at you again tomorrow.